Hello everyone, this is my Volkswagen ID3 First Edition Plus and in six weeks the three-year lease on this car runs out, I have to give it back. So, the question is what will be my next car, what functions do I need in the car that I didn't have in my ID3 and what are options and features that I just don't need. By the way, if you're ordering an ID3, 4 or 5 and before the ordering process you use the referral link that I have in the description below, we both get 200 euros charging credit. I have this car for th almost three years now. I drove about 50,000 kilometers with it. In the first three months I drove 15,000 kilometers because I did a lot of testing, a lot of uh, drives, trips and everything. And then it was more work, the long distance drive were less and I had a lot of press cars where I didn't drive, drove this car. It would, would be more if I didn't have any press cars. There are a lot of things of this car that I love a lot and I made a lot of videos about it. Of course there's a lot of uh, things that I didn't like and I had my problems with it like a lot of people have had problems with Volkswagen ID cars. Overall it was a great experience and driving wise it's just exactly my thing. Volkswagen ID cars are extremely comfortable and quiet and for me the price of an, a Volkswagen ID car to the comfort and the, the what I just said, stability, comfortableness and quietness is better than for example other cars that are quieter and more comfortable but then the price goes signific significantly up and that's why it was always a good package for me. But let's go through some features that I didn't have in this car and that I need. <laughs> Number one is range and battery size. This car, 62 kilowatt hour battery, 58 kilowatt hours can be used. WLTP range 420 kilometers. I achieve in the winter at 80% around a bit less than 300 kilometers now. It also had 10% degradation this car. That was in September last year. This year it could be 11 or 12. I don't know yet. We'll test it. So subscribe so you don't miss that. Oh, I locked it. <laughs> um, and in the winter it's of course because this car also does not have a heat pump significantly less range um, so in the winter at 80 percent I would say around 230 240 kilometers and I need more so in my next car I want at least 70 75 80 kilowatt hour battery and why do I want it um, because a big battery gives me a few more advantages than just range. Range is important when it comes to long distance driving because the first charging stop can be a bit further. You can charge at home to 100% and drive, drive further till you have to charge, especially in the winter. That's a big thing, and especially with heat pump. We come to that in a second. And also what you get with a big battery is usually better charging. This car charges a peak of 132-34 kilowatt but it goes down under 100 kilowatt very fast at around 33 percent and it looks like it won't get too too much better than this. <laughs> um, when the car came out three years ago 100 kilowatt peak charging was a really good number. It wasn't amazing but it was good for a small car and dead size battery uh, and now with cars coming out with 170, 180 or the 800 volt system above 200 kilowatt charging peak and some staying above 100 kilowatt to 70 or 80 percent that's just something I want to get closer to. I don't need a uh, uh, it doesn't have to be 800 volt and above 200 kilowatt but more charging power and a better charging curve so going long distance is just faster. 
Number two is self-steering. This car, uh, when I ordered this car, there were three versions available. One without the matrix LED headlights, so the high beam assist that just uh, blends out cars and the, the um, high beams stay on. I wanted that, that was important to me. And the version above, the Max, um, had 20 inch wheels and the travel assist which is self-steering and I wanted the travel assist and I wanted the heat pump that this car had but I didn't want the 20 inch tires. First of all I didn't like the look and it looked too big and it also had the panoramic roof which I don't like. Come to this in a second too. So this at the time was, was the perfect configuration for me but in my next car I really would like self-steering so that I can press a button, it steers itself. It doesn't have to be the most amazing self-steering, but just that I can take my hands off the steering wheel for just two seconds to get something to drink or something. That would be nice. I yeah, already mentioned a heat pump. This car doesn't have a heat pump and I have uh, compared this car with a car with with a heat pump in the in the winter at nine, minus nine degrees and I had I think less consumption with the heat pump of around nine percent and I would just like to have that if you have a car with an electric car with good range and yes good charging in the winter it would just be nice that a heat pump is reducing uh, the consumption also a bit. Uh, I always had a bit of a problem with heat pumps when, when they uh, spool up and they need a lot of power to, to initial heat up the car that uh, there's a vibration in the car sometimes the steering wheel is a bit vibrating but I got used to that <laughs> uh, in the beginning in the first six months of having this car and I drove a car with a heat pump I was like ah, I didn't need a heat pump see it's vibrating it's loud da, da, da. it is louder uh, for sure but also the loudness sometimes <laughs> is good when you're outside the car when you know that the preheating really works so with this sometimes you have to go whoa, whoa. if the AC is off and you just have heat um, with the PTC heater that this car has you can barely hear that it's doing something and sometimes I'm I started the preheating is it really doing it when I'm walking by when I'm walking the dogs or something so that's but that's not that important but I think a heat pump would be a good upgrade for me, since I have a YouTube channel and I will report about the new car, it's important that it's a newer car. So if I buy a car that's a year old, nobody cares. And so it has to be a mix. I have to like it. It has to be something I enjoy. It has to be great for what I'm doing with the car, driving to work, having three dogs. Um, but also it has to be something where it's something new. I can show it to the public on YouTube and, and whatever. And there should be interest. I'm, I'm aware that it doesn't take long, so after two, three months a new car is, is not interesting anymore to anyone. But um, it would be nice, uh, of course, uh, to, to have that, but of course there's always a balance. So how much does the car cost? How much uh, is the interest uh, or how much is it important for my channel? I have to, to weigh what's the best for me. Of course there are some base things that I want in a car that are important to me. I need a cockpit, so an instrument cluster. So Model Y, Model 3 is out. And a lot of people, I'm not, I'm not bashing Tesla in any way. Um, they're great cars. Um, I just like to have that. It's my opinion how I want the car and that's just how it is. I like an instrument cluster. Um, Head-up display is nice, but for me it's not necessary so if the next car doesn't have a head-up display i can live with it if it has it it's a bonus on some some cars head-up display is are, are really nice on some cars it's okay nothing special what i need is a size not smaller than this i just need this size sometimes i go away i have stuff with and the three dogs in in the, the rear seats i want three seats in the rear so i have three th uh, seat belts that's important i want enough space headroom so I don't feel like I'm cramped but I only need it in the front so if the rear has not a lot of space so grown-ups wouldn't have uh, uh, space in it I don't care I don't need that trunk space I'm fine with the ID3 gives me I don't need more sometimes it would be nice to have a bit more uh, but overall it's not the most important thing what's more important to me when it comes especially to this car is the turning circle it's just amazing how you can maneuver everything and you also can see very well and uh, I would like that to have that still uh, not 
extremely gigantic car where I can't see anything. Um, and also what I would love, what this car didn't have, would be a 360 degree camera. So you can see what's around the car, what's happening. And uh, this car only have a backup camera and that's it. But ID3 has that now, just in the, the time when I ordered the car, it wasn't available. Yeah, already said it, a panoramic roof is nothing important to me. A lot of uh, car manufacturers are, hey, look, all the, the roof here is all glass. You can see outside, you feel free. Uh, I drove many cars with uh, a lot of panoramic roofs and for me, it's either negative <laughs> because most of the time for me for filming it's negative since I need a suction cup and and with not I can put a rod in there that uh, is 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 connected and then I can put the camera wherever I want with the suction cup it has a, a special height it cannot go any lower but this is not important I don't see it, I don't get the benefit for me maybe it's for people that are in the on the rear seats that I can they can look outside and see the sky but for me there was never any benefit benefit I don't need that so you heard it I need a new car that's interesting to people that is extremely comfortable has a cockpit has a bigger battery than this uh, more range better charging uh, and maybe is also the next step from this car to the next and I have driven so many cars <laughs> um, in my career as a youtuber and testing electric cars I have tested I think 50 different EVs and I don't mean different versions so I drove many versions of the ID3 but that's one car that I tested for me but overall it was uh, around 50 cars and um, I most of them I could test for uh, two weeks or sometimes even longer and so I got to know the cars uh, what is important to me what annoys me and what is great and what do am I looking for and I have decided <laughs> on a car it's not a hundred percent but pretty much um, and I think my next car, and I already told that on my weekly uh, live stream on Sunday, and my Patreons and YouTube members, channel members, of course, know that as well. So check the link in the description below. Become uh, a member or a Patreon to support the channel. Thank you very much. It is the Volkswagen ID7. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's not maybe not a big surprise. And um, I said a lot of times I don't want a huge car, and ID7 is a big car, but I think. Uh, my important thing was not an SUV. I don't need a huge high SUV with higher consumption and more space, space that I don't need. The ID7 has space that I don't need, that's true. Um, especially on the rear seats, I don't need that. Trunk space, I'm okay with that it's more, but the rear seats, I wouldn't need it. Uh, but it has less consumption than this ID3 with a bigger battery and there's options on top. I could get the GTX version in the ID3. There will be a GTX version, but it's still going to be rear wheel drive. And from ID7, it's in the beginning rear wheel drive, stronger motor than the ID3 here, but it could be also the GTX version, which will be shown in the, at the uh, Munich Motor Show, by the way, in a few weeks. I will be there. Maybe I can see you, but watch for the video. Again, subscribe. I drove it in Spain for uh, 45 minutes. That's not very long. Uh, and I could sit in a, a production version uh, for a while and, and see it and test it and see the infotainment system and how everything is. And it was uh, uh, very appealing to me. It wasn't perfect. So the head up display is now the main focus in the ID7 and I wouldn't, I'm not biggest fan of that so I still would love to have the same instrument cluster that I have here with the consumption numbers and anything everything but it's not gonna happen there will be average consumption in a head-up display but not all the rest of the numbers I love that from 3.1 on in ID cars you could see your trip data in your instrument cluster and this will be gone with the ID7 and that's I'm not happy about that I'm happy that it will be a new ID software with a new screen that's a new design where buttons are different and it has new features in the car. ID7 will have a battery that will preheat with a button or automatically when you navigate to a charger. It shows you the peak charging power you can have with the temperature of the battery right now and then you can press and heat it up. I find that amazing. Um, and 
By the way, this is Hanart functions that other cars don't have. It's just I know the driving, which is the most important to me in the ID7 was just my thing. Um, and then on top there are features that I like. And also the heated and cooled seats, a ventilated seat, they can do both at the same time to have it even more comfortable for drying. It does it automatically. Massage seats, yes, again, other cars have that too, but for me they just fit. And it's just the next step also for the channel. ID7 is new and it will be available all over the world. So also something that not just Europe is watching, all the world could be watching if I get the car. Um, and it's all points that are important. And right now I think this will be my next car. Like I said, I drove many other cars and there are cars that are in some aspects better charging, for example, or power or I don't know, or price. Um, but all combined and what is important to me and what annoyed me with other cars, ID7 will annoy me too, ID3 annoys me with a lot of things, but it was less annoying and the whole mix all together seems to be the best. So right now, next car, will be the ID7. And that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and take care. Bye.